Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a nice cubic equation. We have x cubed plus 2x squared equals 3, and we're going to be solving for x values. I'll be presenting three methods, even though there is a fourth one which we can briefly talk about. Let's start with the first method. When you see an equation like this, one of the things that I would always like you to check is the sum of the coefficients. Obviously, this is not a complete cubic. You want to put the 3 on the left hand side. And then you get your cubic. Notice that the x term is missing, but that's no big deal. Now, when you check the sum of the coefficients, which is 1 plus 2 minus 3, you notice that it's 0. So this is a really good thing to have. And that means x equals 1 is a solution. Great. So knowing that x equals 1 is a solution allows us to find the roots in many different ways. So it opens a lot of doors. But uh, first method is basically using factorization. So here's how I'm going to factor this expression. I'm going to break down the 2x squared. And for this, you don't really need to know that x equals 1 is a solution because it's kind of like a trial and error. And I noticed that, you know, I can just kind of break it down like x cubed minus x squared plus 3x squared. The reason why I break it down that way is because that gives me a 3 that I can use. And now I can make a common factor. Make sense? Again, I'm not use necessarily using the fact that x equals 1 is a solution. So now if we factor this by grouping like this one and this one, we get x squared times x minus 1 plus 3 times x squared minus 1 equals 0. And from here, it should be clear that x equals 1 is a solution. But let's proceed with the solution. Factor difference of two squares. And take out x minus 1. And you'll get x squared plus, and you got to distribute here, 3x plus 3. So we already knew x equals 1 is a solution because we checked it. But from here, we get three solutions. x equals 1 is one of them. And this quadratic equation is going to give you, let's check it out, with the quadratic formula, negative b plus minus the square root of b squared 9 minus 4ac, which is 12. That's going to give you a negative 3. Uh-oh. Those are not going to be real solutions. So the solutions are going to be negative 3 plus minus square root of 3 times i divided by 2. So the, basically, the way you write it is if you have a number that is positive, let's say a, and is greater than 0, square root of negative a can be written as square root of a times i. But of course, I'm going to write it with a plus minus because it could be either one of these. But the plus minus takes care of both cases. Make sense? OK. So now we got our solutions. And the first method is done. OK, let's go ahead and take a look at the second method. And as I said earlier, I'll briefly mention what the fourth method is going to be. If you know of a fifth method, please let us know. So our original equation, or after subtracting 3 from both sides, is going to, is going to be this one. Now, remember, with the first method, we broke down the 2x squared, right? And that gave us two groups that have a common factor. Now we're going to break down the constant, which is the negative 3. So we can kind of write the negative 3 as x cubed minus 1 plus 2x squared minus 2. Again, this doesn't necessarily deal with the fact that x equals 1 is a solution, uh, even though that might help in the solution of the problem. We didn't necessarily use it. So, But the idea was basically to take negative 1, so we can pair it up with the x cubed, and then the rest will be negative 2, which matches nicely with 2x squared. Make sense? OK. So it just falls apart from here. We get difference of two cubes. A lot of good practice on algebra skills if you're dealing with factoring. And then obviously, x squared minus 1 is popping up again. That is, that is going to be the difference of two squares one more time. I'm going to write it x minus 1 and x plus 1. And now x minus 1 is a common factor. Take it out. And, you know, I don't like that when they match uh, or connect. And from here, we're going to get the second factor, x squared plus x plus 1 plus 2x plus 2. 
that's going to give you x squared plus 3x plus 3. Again, to keep a long story short, we're going to get the exact same solution. So let's just go ahead and cheat and copy them from the first method. The, the other solution is going to be negative 3 plus minus root 3i and that divided by 2. And if you actually check the tangent alpha on this problem, you're going to notice that that is a 1 over root 3 and that's going to be a special angle. So it's possible to write this equation in trigonometric form or they express the solutions as I think the cube root of some number. Okay, whatever the complex number is. So this brings us to the end of the second method, not to the end of the video. So don't leave because we still have to talk about the third method and briefly the fourth method. Alrighty. So third method basically looks at this equation from a somewhat different perspective because even though it uses the same idea of factoring, it kind of, you know, uses a different mentality. So how do you write this as a product of two polynomials? So that's how we factor it, as opposed to breaking down one of the terms and creating two groups of two and then going from there. Make sense? Okay, in that sense, it's different. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to assume that this is factorable into a linear and a quadratic. Obviously, you can also have three linear factors, but that will be hard to work with because of the number of coefficients you kind of have to deal with. I don't know. I haven't tried it. Maybe it's okay, but here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to first assume that my linear factor is going to be x minus a, and the other factor is going to be x squared plus bx plus c. Okay, this works because, first of all, we have a monic polynomial, a monic cubic, which means the coefficient of x cubed is 1, so we can break it down into x and x squared nicely. And the constants, and why do I use a negative a instead of plus a? It doesn't really matter. It's just going to give you the solution right away because x equals a is going to be one of the solutions. No big deal, you can also make it x plus a if this bothers you. Anyways, let's go ahead and distribute the right-hand side. That's going to give us x cubed plus bx squared plus cx minus ax squared minus abx minus ac equals 0. But I don't want to set it equal to 0 because I want to set it equal to x cubed plus 2x squared minus 3. Now, we're going to put together the coefficients and compare. So like b minus a is going to be the coefficient of x squared. The coefficient of x is going to be c minus a, b, and our constant is going to be, let's see, we've taken care of these, these, and this is the constant. I've got to make sure that I cover everything because um, otherwise we might miss or reuse one of the terms. Okay, now, what do we get? We get 2 from here. The coefficient of x is 0. That's nice because there's no x here. And then the coefficient of I mean, the constant term is 3, or negative 3, so that means ac is 3. So this gives us b minus a equals 2, b minus a equals 2, I'm just going to say it, c equals ab, and ac is equal to 3. Obviously, the three variables and three equations, you can solve this. And guess what? From here, you're going to get a equals 1, right? <laughs> and b equals 3, and c equals negative 3. And guess what? That's going to give you x minus 1 times x squared plus 3x plus 3 equals 0. And the solutions are going to be the same. Now, i got to show you the graph. Also, talk about the uh, briefly talk about the fourth method because I promised to do that, right? Okay, so but anyways, the solutions from here are going to be, again, x equals 1 and x equals negative 3 plus minus root 3 times i divided by 2 two complex non-real solutions and one real solution. Let's go ahead and uh, briefly talk about the fourth method. So the, what is the fourth method? The fourth method for this equation is going to be cubic formula. Yay! Uh, not yay because that's going to be a little bit painful because you kind of have to replace x with y minus two-thirds. Uh-oh, that's not very good, right? Anyways, you can do it easy peasy, lemon cheesy. Let's go ahead and take a look at the graph real quick. 
notice we have a graph that intersects y equals 3 at a single point, and that is going to happen at 1, 3. Therefore, x equals 1 is the only real solution. And this brings us to the end of the video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.